Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Profitable Mindset Podcast. Welcome to the Profitable Mindset, a show dedicated to teaching you the skills you need to build a profitable product-based business that makes you feel free and fully in control. Here is your host, Charlotte Smith. Hey, you guys, welcome to episode 22 of the Profitable Mindset podcast, where I'm going to talk all about branding today. And this is part one of a two part series. So episode 22 and 23, when combined together, will give you a strong foundation for your branding strategy. And speaking of branding strategy, I have created a branding bundle for you, which will help you begin that process of making your brand stand out. In that bundle, which will be delivered by email, there are steps that will you can take that will help you do that. So that branding bundle is at 3calmarketing.com forward slash branding. Be sure to sign up to get that. Like I said, it's free and it's going to help you get started in your branding. It's super valuable information. And that's the information I'm going to walk you through more about how to do that next week. Uh, But you can definitely get started today. All right. And then I want to catch you up on what I've been doing. I just got back from speaking at the Great Plains Growers Conference in Missouri, and I gave the keynote talk, which was awesome. Oh my gosh, I got to be on a great big stage in a great big auditorium, which was full lights shining down on me, really super fun. And I do want to say that right before I went on stage, one of the conference organizers came up to me and said, I'm really excited you're here. You are the first female keynote speaker we've ever had. And I just want to say that I'm really excited to be in this time in the world where people are opening up to other options. I This is not about men versus women at all, but I think there are lots of places in our world where we've just always done things a certain way. And so that's the way they always get done. And once you open up to the opportunity that, you know, there's uh, other speakers that look differently than what you've always had can bring new information. So I'm really proud to be part of that, uh, what's happening today in today's world. And congratulations to the Great Plains Growers Conference for being open-minded and trying new things. Anyway, that was a long explanation, but I love being part of the world today. Now, a little backstory. 30 years ago, when I got my first corporate job out of college, I worked for Freightliner Corporation in the corporate office, and my boss told me that I would never be paid as much as my coworker, who was hired the same time as I was, because I was a woman. He looked at me at that time. He said, no, you'll never make as much as him. And I'm not going to give you that raise because someday you're going to leave and go have kids and and you won't be worth it. He told this to my face and I just accepted it because that's what people did 30 years ago. So that just makes what happened at this conference all that more exciting that in my lifetime, I get to see women having more opportunity because guess what? We have lots of valuable information and help and things to share, and uh, it's wonderful that you're taking advantage of that. So thank you to that conference for having me. Loved being there. Okay, so let's get back to branding. In this episode, I'm going to teach you a couple things about why you need a brand and actually what a brand is, why it's important, and then, of course, some steps on how to make that happen. First of all, many farmers think that they don't need a brand, or if they do think they need a brand, they think that branding is the magic sauce that will make them successful, and that consists of a logo and a fancy website design and having uh, professional photos of their farm, and then they'll have success. Or sometimes they think that if they get just the right tagline or mission statement, then they'll have success. But I'm here to tell you that your website and your logo and the fonts on there or your mission statement, those are not your branding and that's not where you want to start 
in the creation of it. Now, they are a piece of the branding, but those things really need to come later. And as a matter of fact, it's better if you create a logo later after you've done the branding work that I will introduce you to today. Because what happens is you end up, the logo you would have chosen on day one is a lot different than the logo you would choose later. So don't make the mistake I did 10 years ago when I started my farm and I thought, oh, I need a logo. (laughs) So I paid $1,500 for this logo, which was very pretty. But once I started doing the branding work that I'm going to teach you today, I realized that the logo really wasn't right anymore. So don't make that mistake. I love logos. I think logo design is important, but save that till after you have really honed in on what your brand is, which includes doing those worksheets I've got in that branding bundle for you today, all right? Then come up with a logo later if you even need one. And then you will find that when you have a very clear, strong brand based on the unique approach I have for you today, that is how people identify you, all right? So it's important to know the difference too between corporate branding and personal branding. What happens is I see a lot of farmers model their branding efforts after corporate brands. And that is not what you want to do because you and I will never have enough money to compete with the advertising dollars that it takes to build a corporate brand. Okay. They're two different things. A corporate brand is a big company and there's no person attached to it. There's there's no face. There's no family attached. It's the opposite of you and me. All right. These are brands like Starbucks, Nike, McDonald's, Amazon. They are not connecting with you or me based on a relationship with a real person. So hopefully you've heard me talk about how important this is to you and I and our small businesses, that people buy from us because there's a person attached. And if there isn't a person attached, then it's much cheaper and more convenient to shop with these corporate brands, okay? Unfortunately, many small farmers try to model their branding attempts after these big corporations, okay? So they go out and they get that logo, they have that tagline, they try to advertise, but without the personal connection, you will need billions of dollars to advertise to compete, okay? You you just won't be able to compete. So here's how I see some farmers trying to compete. They will come to me and they'll ask me to do a website consult with them. They'll wonder, why aren't they getting customers? You know, maybe they paid a lot of money for a website. It's just not working. So I go to the website and there's no mention of who they are in there. There's no pictures of them. There's no mention of their names. There's no about the actual farmer. None of that. And the reason they give me is they think they're trying to be professional and they're trying to do what they think is important in branding. You know, they're trying to look very business-like and corporate-like, but that's not why people buy from us. You and I have to practice a different kind of branding, okay? You don't want to be doing corporate branding. What you and I need to do is personal branding. And that's what I'm going to teach you about this week and also in the next episode. And again, corporate branding, there's no face attached. There's no personal relationship. It's all about quick and convenient and consistency. You know, like Starbucks, that's what they're famous for, is that I can get a Breve Latte anywhere in the world, okay? I can travel anywhere and it tastes the same. And I actually appreciate that because I do travel a lot. And so I get off the airplane or I land in a town and I look for that Starbucks logo because I know exactly what to expect, okay? That consistency, that is a corporate brand and it's not you and me, all right? You and I are our brand. In our case, we are building these personal brands. And that's what that means is people buy from you and I because of who we are and how we help them, okay? In today's world, what's happening is many people are trusting individuals versus larger companies, okay? This is why our personal branding is really crucial because we need to let people know who we are, what we're about, how we can help them because they will trust us more than big corporations today. 
That's why people are buying from us because we've created this in our personal brand. So if you're one of those farmers where I happen to land on your website and there's no mention of you, there's no photos, there's no talk about who you are, your name. I don't know what your story is. I don't know how your story relates to me. I don't know you. I don't know your spouse. I don't know your kids. Then I'm not going to buy from you. It's easier to just go buy from a Whole Foods. Okay. So when you're trying to look corporate like that, well, then I'm going to go for the big corporation that I do know. Okay. You don't have enough money to compete without infusing your person into it. That's what's working in today's world. So one of the first steps you can take just as a little piece of advice is change your website from this sterile corporate business look online, which no one's going to connect with, and start creating a personal brand by infusing yourself in there, okay? So save your money, If you've budgeted a bunch of money for a logo and a fancy website right now, save that till later after you've done the branding steps I've included in that branding bundle, okay? And you know, when you start up a farm, there are plenty of places you can spend that money. Like I did 10 years ago, 1,500 bucks. I could have used that on a new milk cow. Back then, that's what a milk cow costs. So use that money for something else. And know that after you've done the work I teach of developing your personal brand, then you can create the perfect logo to complement it. This type of personal branding is what sets you apart from your competition, too. It's what makes people decide to become a customer and then remain loyal to you, okay? It's that relationship with you and the fact that you can help them with their personal struggles or personal goals. Then... What you happen or what you notice will happen next is branding, the personal branding that you do makes your competition irrelevant. What I mean by this is when you have a clear personal brand, there is no competition. For instance, my customers come to me because of me and my story and how I make them feel and our customer service and how I help them reach their goals. So they wouldn't dream of buying chicken from anyone else, even though they can buy chicken at several small farms right around us, okay? And that's because they've connected to my brand, which is me, and I'm going to teach you how to do the same thing, okay? It's wonderful when all the farmers in the area don't have to feel like they're competing, but instead they feel like they each offer something unique to them, to their customers, okay? Now, the other thing is, when I first started my farm, again, 10 years ago, I made the mistake that a lot of farmers make, and I thought it was about my products. I thought people were going to buy from me because of my farming practices, because I had the cleanest milk, or because our chickens were on grass more than any other farmer, right? or because of our special breed of hogs. Or I hear farmers say people will buy their flowers or their vegetables because they're organic or something like that, okay? So again, this was 10 years ago when I thought this, and my marketing, which was my blog posts and my Facebook posts back then, were all about how clean my milk was and that it was from these cows that were on grass 10 months of the year. And that was okay, but it didn't make me stand out. I was just one of all the other farmers around me trying to be a billboard saying how I stood out with my unique farming practices that we were all actually doing very similarly. (laughs) When you try to sell based on your farming practices, people won't notice you and they really don't care how great my products are because as I mentioned before, what they care about is what you can do for them, how you can help them how you can help them reach their goals or solve their problems with your products. That's what they're looking for. Not, do I have more features on my grass-fed milk than the next farmer, okay? And this is going to be exactly the same for you. When you learn how to brand yourself this way, farming practices are really only important to the farmer, all right? And it doesn't matter what you sell. If you sell flowers or vegetables or wool, or meat, or eggs, whatever it is, it's not your farming practices or the quality of your product that attracts buyers. 
Instead, people come to you because of your personal brand, which includes how you help them, how you make them feel, your stories as they relate to the customer, your relationship with them. This is what personal branding is, and this is what farm branding needs to be today, unless you're a huge corporate uh, farm, okay? Now, as soon as I discovered this years ago, I was hooked because I started seeing this show up in my customer base. People were coming to me for my story, and they were sending their friends to shop with us because of our story and our relationship. They were coming to me for the experience they had in our farm store with my employees. And they were coming to me for the relationship that I was having with them both in person and then email and on social media. And I would hear comments like, I love coming out here and chatting with you. And it's just kind of a fun side benefit that I get to buy things from you too and feed my family all week. Okay. So they were coming for me. They were coming for the brand I created, not because I had certain farming practices. So my brand became how people experience me and our farm, both in person, but also online. And it's the relationship you create. It's your story you tell, how it relates to them. And that's when they decide to buy from you when they could just click a button on Amazon and get it delivered by five o'clock the same day. But when you have a relationship with your customers and you communicate how you help them, that's how they decide to buy from you. And that's your brand. And branding, remember, is not having the cleanest milk or the cheapest beef or cheapest of anything or organic anything. It's not what's important to you as a farmer, but instead, it's what your customers value. It's how you help them reach their goals or how you help them solve their problems. Now, if you don't know who you're talking to in your marketing and who you're talking to is what I call your dream customer and what they need from you, which is help reaching their goals or solving their problems, then you'll have a really hard time getting someone to pay for your products. It's this simple, you guys. It's not easy, but it's this simple. You've got to know, number one, who you're talking to, and number two, how you help them, okay? So again, worksheets in the branding bundle will help you know exactly how to do that. Then once you find out how you're helping people, you will communicate this to your customers. That's for your email marketing, your website, and your social media accounts. They all work together to communicate the information that you're going to learn about today, all right? Now, remember, it's not the value that your beef cows are 100% grass-fed or that your animals are a special heritage breed. Instead, when you know your customers inside and out and you know how you help them because you've asked them and they've told you, you'll find they use your products for very different reasons than you think. For instance... Maybe you find out, like I did, that your ideal customer has her 40th birthday coming up and she decided to run her first half marathon because she wanted to look better at age 40 after four kids than any other time in her life. This was her goal in life. So in preparing to train for that and to reach that goal, she was researching. And at some point, using Google, she learned that if she changed her diet, she'd have more energy. And somehow in her Googling, our farm came up and she ended up out here. And part of the reason our farm comes up in Google is exactly what I teach in my marketing course, how to make sure you show up high in a Google search. I talk about these things on my website. She connected with it and she knew by reading that if she needed more energy, our products would help her, okay? Now, she's not going to connect with any farming practices listed on my website, but she's going to connect with a blog post perhaps about the five ways uh, eating farm fresh food gives you more energy. And again, I know this from interviewing my customers and you're going to learn how to do the exact same thing and get their words and use them in your marketing too. So then once you know what your customers are needing help with and you get that out on your social media and your website, your branding and your marketing are working hand in hand, attracting people to you. Just hand over fist, okay? Your door is going to be 
beat down by all the people that will come to you because you learn how to connect with people in this way. So this woman, this 40-year-old dream customer with her goal of running the half marathon and looking great at age 40, she's going to love that she can come out and connect with our farm and become a customer. She's going to tell all her friends. And then I blog about that and her success, post on social media about that, and other people read her story. They connect with our brand. And it's all downhill from there, okay? It's just amazing that when you learn what your customers are using your products for and you communicate that, you will attract many, many more people that don't argue with your price. Price is no object when you're helping people reach their goals, okay? And know that these questions I'm giving to you in that bundle, and the reason I'm giving them to you is because I've suggested people go interview their customers. And what they do instead is they email me or they come to the Profitable Mindset Facebook group and they'll say, I don't know what value I offer my customers. Do you have any ideas? Well, I can't answer that. And people inside the Profitable Mindset Facebook group, other farmers, they may make wild guesses, but that is not helpful to you. That is not going to work because it's your customers that have the answer. See, you can't fake doing this work. Your brand will not connect with people if you think, well, I'm an introvert. I don't really want to interview people. So I'm just going to ask other farmers how they think my products help people. That doesn't work, you guys. You won't connect with people, okay? You've got to do this work. And if you need confidence, listen to the last episode all about generating confidence so that then you can go out and interview your customers, ask them the questions on the worksheet, find out how they're using their products. Nobody else can answer that for you. When you follow the instructions in there and you communicate this, what happens is your information will resonate with people on a personal level. And then you're building your personal brand, okay? You're speaking their language and you're connecting with all sorts of people on the thoughts and ideas that they're having, okay? Instead of your farming practices. And then that's when you are your brand. You're made up of your message and your values, the solutions you offer, the customer service you offer. That, all of this put together is your brand, not your logo not your website, not your followers, not having the highest quality chemical-free flowers or beef or eggs in the area. None of those things are your brand. Your products are not your brand. You are your brand, all right? Once you communicate that to your customers, oh man, you're gonna have so many people knocking down your door. You'll be like us with a wait list for a decade. And the reason I'm getting you more information on getting started with branding, both this week and next, is I want to prepare you for farm marketing from the heart. This is my signature course. I teach it twice a year, sometimes only once a year. It's coming up in February. In that course are hours and hours of instruction to help you build your brand, okay? That's the full meal deal. This, what I can do on the podcast, is like a tiny little chicken nugget, (laughs) but farm marketing from the heart is a full meal deal, okay? Take that class. Decide now that you're going to sign up for it. Keep your eyes peeled. I will communicate in email when registration is open, but guess what? It happens on Valentine's Day. I thought that was really cute. Get it? Farm marketing from the heart. Registration opens on Valentine's Day. I'm so excited. I'm going to give a free training that day, which will tell you all about the course, and it's going to tell you some other things you can implement right away to get build that profitable farm. But I just want to give you a heads up. Get your budget ready. Decide you're going to take that class. The longer you wait, the more you risk going out of business by year two. And this is what I hear from our students all the time. Okay? So keep your eyes peeled. Stay tuned. And again, When you develop your personal brand, do you find that competition is irrelevant? It doesn't matter that there might be 10 farmers in your area producing the same thing you are. And this is what I hear all the time from our students. It doesn't matter that I'm up the street from them. When they learn how to build their personal brand, they have their own set of dream customers who are very loyal to them, who wouldn't dream of shopping anywhere else, okay? They learn to go out of their way and pay more money to buy our products 
because this is the brand we've built. And the reason they're more money is, let's face it, we have to be more money than the grocery store, okay? Because we're small. There's no economy of scale in most cases. So this branding process will give them a reason to not even question the price because you can help them reach their goals. And that is what sets you apart, all right? Also, that builds your confidence. It allows you the freedom to become a sustainable and profitable farm. So again, get the whole branding bundle. That is over at 3cowmarketing.com forward slash branding. Let's get to work on it, okay? Can't wait to help you guys. See you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. For more great resources, check out theprofitablemindset.com. See you next time.